and to go out there and continue to do the things that we need to do to win a ball game. For proof, look no further than the sixth. With the Red Sox up 4-1, to one, Trot Nixon let off with a base hit. Then with two on and two out, shortstop Orlando Cabrera came up looking to extend his postseason hitting streak to nine games. Swing and a fly ball, deep left center, way back, way back, off the wall. Yeah! Nixon is in, Damon Rabin, he scores. Two more for Boston. All six of their runs have scored tonight on clutch two-out RBI hits. With a five-run lead, it was now safe to take the pressure off Schilling and his ankle. His six gutsy innings without allowing an earned run had become a part of World Series lore. The biggest story of this game, the work of Kurt Schilling on the bad ankle. He gutted it out for six innings. I've been there. I've been hurt and pitching hurt, and, and I can only admire that. I know exactly what's going through his mind and what's going through his heart. The Fabian Kurt Schilling, who is a hero for the Sox. You could see that he was in pain very often, but Schilling found a way to get it done. Maybe I put so much trust in the Schill because I've been around him. You take for granted almost his resolve to be a great pitcher. I just wish everybody on this planet could experience the day that I just experienced. It's just the most amazing day of my life. From one folk hero to another, where in the ninth, closer Keith Folk continued his postseason scoreless streak. A ground ball to short. Cabrera has it. Stumbles, gets up, throws to first, and the Red Sox lead the series two games to nine. And the Boston Red Sox are halfway to the World Series title. They have taken games one and two in Fenway and head for St. Louis in full control of the 2004 World Series. <laughs> So it was on to St. Louis, which hadn't hosted a World Series game since 1987. In that series against the Twins, the Cardinals lost their first two games on the road, but won the next three at home. So not even a little rain prior to game three could dampen their spirits. Yeah, we like playing on the road. We love playing at home. We're going home for three games where we haven't lost this postseason, so our confidence is still there. We're not worrying uh, either way. We're going to just go about our business. Baseball is usually not a huge home field advantage type situation, but it has played that way in the playoffs. Come on, dude. Tell me the first day of spring training you were thinking about this. We're very excited to have a 2-0 lead, but we need to win two more games. And the sooner the better. We cannot let them get any kind of momentum. Win these next two. Got two more two games to win. We haven't accomplished anything yet. We learned a lot from the Yankees series that it doesn't matter how many games you won, you haven't won anything until you won the last one. The Cardinals this postseason 6-0 and here at home. This place is ready, the rain has stopped, away we go. The Cardinals, in as dire a circumstance as has befallen them at any time this year. Jeff Supon had pitched for Boston in 2003. He knew just how dangerous they could be. Now here's Manny Ramirez, who is four for nine in this World Series, and he has hit 15 straight postseason games. That's the fourth best run in postseason history. Not to mention Manny's three home runs off Supon in his last five times he faced him. Four for six, anyone? Oh! <laughs> Manny, he always the son that came that held this ball club. Before the game, I told him, don't be afraid to go deep. You know, he counts in, in playoff too. So the streak continues to 16 games. 
And this one with a bang. Here they go again. They've scored in the first inning in all three of these World Series games. Manny Ramirez with a two-out home run has put the Red Sox ahead. Now the Cardinals coming up against Pedro. Pedro Martinez had been through an up-and-down season, but this was the kind of confrontation that he thrives on. We're very fortunate to be able to have someone like Pedro in a game three going into a hostile environment. Come on, let's go. Come on, Petey. Pedro did struggle in the first, but after the Cardinals loaded the bases, they chose to gamble, and they lost. That ball is drifted to left field. Coming into the ball is Manny. Very shallow left. He makes the catch. Tagging and heading home. Walker, the throw, right there waiting. He is tagged out. A double play, and the inning is over. Before that, you know, I was just thinking, hey, if they hit a fly ball over here, I'm going to try to throw somebody out out there. So it did, and I just went home, man, and I think that was a big play for the game. But an even bigger play took place in the third. With runners on second and third and nobody out, the Red Sox played the infield back. You better jump on Martinez here or you might never get another chance. The infield is back, normal depth. The ground ball to the right side can do a lot of things. Walker swings, ground ball to the right side, and Supon does not come home. Supon is hung up. Now Ortiz goes back to third, and he is out. Well, we knew that Walker was up. We couldn't play the infield in. We had a one-run lead, and we were actually giving up on that run at third. Supon could walk home, but for some reason he stops. Seeing Supon stranded in between third and home plate, was a plus for us because I, I went over thinking, well, we got we got one out and one run in. Not only do the Cardinals lose a run, they lose a man at third and one out. Renteria's over there. The throw by Ortiz gets Supon, and you cannot butcher up a play any worse than Jeff Supon just did. The third inning with the base running miss out, it seemed like the crowd was kind of stunned. It seemed like the Cardinals even kind of it knocked them back for a minute and Pedro collected himself and really started pitching. Martinez looks like he has settled in. And that spelled trouble, because Ramirez helped to give Boston a 4-0 lead in the fifth. And that would be more than enough for Pedro. You could just see the confidence growing in him. He started throwing the change up a little bit more, keeping these guys off balance, and you know, that's what I've seen him do the last couple years that I've been here, that's why he's Pedro Martinez. Missed two early chances against Pedro Martinez, and since then he has shut down the Redbird attack. Another strikeout, that's four, that's 11 straight. Pedro on center stage in the biggest game of his career in the World Series has answered the challenge, and I'd never thought there was any doubt he would. He's a Hall of Famer, he's a competitor. He knows what he wants to do, and he wants to dominate. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Six straight outs for Pedro. He was outstanding tonight. 98 pitches. He retired the last 14. Pedro was Pedro, man. He threw up a three-hit, seven-inning game, and uh, he even had a good eye to play. So, I mean, he did a great job. Pedro was uh, pretty awesome. It seemed like he got better as the game went on. I mean, his uh, changeup and his cutter was just amazing. Uh, one of the better performances I've seen of him this year. His timing couldn't have been better. The only question was whether his first ever World Series win would be his last one as a Red Sox. My heart will always be in Boston and, and with the fans and, and, and the people there. The Boston Red Sox are one victory away after 86 years of winning a World Series for the first time since 1918. I've been with this organization since 97, and that's all you've ever heard is, you know, win this one for my, you know, my grandpa who was 85, who's never seen you guys win. And to finally be, you know, one win away from bringing the city a championship, it's an exciting thought. Good 
Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri, where the Red Sox try to end the baseball season. Game seven tonight, game seven. We're trying to win tonight. That's our best way to attain our goal. And when there's a time when the season's over, and it's time to look back and reflect, but right now we're competing. Well, you know what's at stake here. The Boston Red Sox, one win away from trying to do something that the franchise hasn't accomplished in 86 years, and that is win a World Series. And to this point, for the first three games of this World Series, they have out-hit, they have out-pitched, and they have run the bases better than the St. Louis Cardinals. They have been relentless. Yeah! yeah! Let's go, let's go. The Red Sox bursting with confidence. Yeah! Boston has won seven straight postseason games. No one has ever won eight in a row in the playoffs. Let's go, baby, let's go. Make it history right here. Take it. Will the impossible dream two come true tonight? Will it be mission accomplished tonight? The Roos is saying before this game, I love this team too much. This team is too special to have it end tonight. Four games in the World Series and goodbye. Let's go, gotta have it, gotta have it. The mission seemed impossible. But if the Cardinals were to come back, it would have to begin with their 26-year-old starter. Jason Marquis. Now, he was a strong factor in the Cardinals' run to the National League title. That's the marquee they need tonight. But just as they did in the first three games, St. Louis fell into an immediate hole, with Damon, once again, the catalyst. I felt like I was going to hit a home run right there. And I was like, you know what? If I get a pitch in this certain spot, I'm going to drill it. Swing and a shot ripped into right field. Way back it goes. He is going to put Boston on top. And the Sox have done it again. And the Boston Red Sox, on the verge of a World Series win, have taken a 1-0 lead, one batter into the game. They just have not let the Cardinals get started. You can just see the field out there. The players were kind of deflated after that. They're like, wow, here we go again. Coming into this game, the Red Sox had scored first in nine of 13 postseason games. And they won all of them. Starting for the Red Sox, Derek Lowe, who struggled most of the year and wasn't even supposed to start a postseason game. All he did was win the deciding games of both the Division Series and the ALCS. I think it was a perfect situation for Derek to pitch. When Derek's confidence is high, it's very tough to beat him. He allowed a leadoff single in the first, but then settled in. And his nasty sinker was one reason why this explosive Cardinals lineup was reaching a new low. Swing and a dribbler off the end of the bat up the first base line. Low picks it up and tags the diving Roland for the out. What a play that was. I saw that confidence in his look and in his stride and the way he was carrying himself. We thought we were going to get good things from D'Lo and we did. 0-2 pitch. Here's a swing and a miss. He's out on strikes in a hurry. He is pitching with all kinds of confidence now. Why be nervous? Why get uptight? You know, this is why you play the game. This is why you work hard to get to the World Series. Enjoy it. I mean, that's that's the attitude I've always taken, and, uh, and, and it works for me. Still clinging to a one to nothing lead in the third inning, the Red Sox loaded the bases with two out. Clutch two out hits had become a Boston theme throughout the series, and Trot Nixon sought to continue the trend. You got to really think about the situation here. You got bases loaded, and all the pressure's on him. Marquis trying to hang in. The Cardinals are trying to hang in. I saw the first two pitches real well, you know, threw from balls, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden he threw ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Expect Trot Nixon to take another one here. Trot Nixon is one of the best fastball hitters in the league. Pretty good chance he's going to get a 3-0 fastball. 3-0 pitch. He swings and hits a fly ball to deep right center. Way back! Way back! It's off the wall! Here comes Ortiz! Here comes Maritek! And a two-run double by Trot Nixon. Hits the Red Sox a 3-0 lead. And what you see there is a 3 and easy Red Sox team with a 3 and over lead, and they're going for it. There's enough trust in Trot and the rest of the guys that we do hit 3 0 up. That's what we want our guys to do is get a pitch they can handle and drive it and do some damage. He missed a home run by five feet. I didn't know if it was going out. I didn't care. As long as he got in the gap and my teammates.